NASA has communicated a new approach to Venus. Following the recent identification of evidence of life on the planet during the 1960s. What is the most basic and trusted way to search life in the universe? And the best way is to search for weird gases, anomalous gases in the atmosphere. Just to be clear, it's not just that they're weird gases, they're gases associated with the existence of life. Yeah. The US Space Agency's records indicate that Venus was considered an extremely hostile environment at the time. During the same period, there was a competition for space exploration and Mars emerged as a prime destination. Despite the apparent unfeasibility for life, the Soviet Union was willing to launch missions to Venus. This happened in a context in which Mars became the main focus of exploration. Neil deGrasse Tyson contributed to shedding light on the details of the Soviet missions to Venus, now gaining access to previously declassified images captured by the Soviet Union. The fall of the Soviet Union not only altered the global geopolitical landscape, but also concealed many of its secrets in line with its well-known propensity for secrecy, including information related to advanced intelligence agencies and possible extraterrestrial interactions. Prior to the United States assuming responsibility for space missions, the Soviet Union led the field. Their particular interest was Venus, which they referred to as Venera. The Venera missions spanned from 1961 to 1983. Unlike the United States, which focused on the Moon, the Soviets concentrated their resources on exploring Venus. Much of what we know about these missions comes from recently disclosed and declassified information, determining precisely what objective they pursued or whether they achieved their secret goals remains a challenge. The Soviets launched 28 expensive spacecrafts for the purpose of exploring the planet. 13 of them entered Venus's atmosphere and 8 landed successfully on its surface. The inaugural spacecraft adapted to the atmosphere of Venus, known as Venera 1, or Sputnik 8 in Western Academy circles, embarked on its interplanetary journey on February 12, 1961. This remarkable feat, weighing a substantial 1,400 pounds, showed the Soviet Union's mastery of spacecraft. Venera 1, in particular, was a marvel to behold. It represented a sophisticated spacecraft incorporating space civilization and equipped with advanced instruments such as a magnetometer and micrometeorite detectors. Unfortunately, Venera 1 did not live up to its expectations. The probe's initial launch attempt ended disastrously, failing to break free from the Earth orbit. The second official launch of Venera 1 succeeded in passing Venus in May 1961, marking the first space mission to achieve this extraordinary milestone. The proof finally landed on the infernal surface of Venus at a distance of approximately 62,000 miles or 100,000 kilometers. However, Venera 1 was unable to transmit any data to the Soviet Union. The launch of Venera 2 took place on November 12, 1961, with great expectations. It achieved completion on February 27, 1966, approximately 15,000 miles from Venus. However, it encountered the same recurring problem. A radiator failure left an overheater that altered its trajectory, causing the loss of the mission on March 4, 1966. Soviet scientists were aware that solving the overheating challenge was crucial for the following Veneta missions, Veneta 3 through Veneta 6, in late 1966. Previously, missions such as Veneta 3 provided them with valuable information about the harsh conditions of Venus allowing them to make the necessary modifications. Venera 3 did not land successfully and crashed to the planet, representing another failure for the Soviet Union. Despite the challenges arising from the Cold War and financial constraints, the Soviet space agency persisted in its determination to succeed. This tenacity eventually paid off, although not in the conventional sense. Venera 4, despite falling victim, to the intense heat and dense Venusian atmosphere gathered valuable data 
over a 90 minute period before entering the planet's dense atmosphere. These findings included the presence of carbon dioxide in Venus's air and the discovery of the planet's lack of a magnetic field. After the modest progress made with Venera 4, astronomers hoped that the Soviet Union would turn its attention to the high levels of greenhouse gases on Venus, which make it an unsuitable environment for life. Nevertheless, the Soviet Space Agency remained steadfast in its determination. In the following years, the Veneta 5 and 6 program represented substantial progress in their ambitious mission. These two probes marked a milestone by transmitting valuable data for nearly an hour as they descended through the dense atmosphere of Venus. This new set of information shed light on the chemical composition of the planet that had previously been known as the Hell Planet. The results showed that Venus was inhospitable to life due to its extreme temperature, high atmospheric pressure, and unbreathable atmosphere. With these findings, hopes of finding life on Venus collapsed for the Soviet Union. However, despite this revelation, suspicious interest in Venus took a surprising turn. Through the classified documents and photographs from the Venera proof, a change in the direction of their focus can be identified. Apparently, the Soviet Space Agency ceased its search for life on Venus after the Venera 5 mission. Instead, it found a new research direction to explore the possible existence of astrobiological beings on the planet. In analyzing the available information, it appears that the Soviets were ahead in their understanding of Venus and its potential to harbor life. Until 2021, our knowledge about Venus and the possibility of non-human life there was limited. It is possible that the Soviets were watching that the technology reached the right level to take advantage of their discoveries. This is evidenced by the successfully landings of Venera 7 and Venera 8 on Venus, which marked a significant milestone in the history of interplanetary exploration. Despite the challenges encountered along the way, these missions succeeded in capturing images of the Venusian surface, highlighting enormous enthusiasm among the Soviets. This prompted a shift in their focus from trying to generate life on Venus, which seemed unlikely, to exploring the possibility of finding life on another planet. Neil deGrasse Tyson, a fervent advocate of the search for habitable planets, praised this breakthrough during a conversation with astrobiologist David Grinfoon. If there was life on the surface and that became inhospitable and they had some way to fly, then they could just continue to ascend away from the heat. And so far we know there's whole floating cities in this layer of the atmosphere where they found the phosphine. Although the idea of floating cities on Venus may seem fanciful, the key point is to assess the potential for hosting life beyond its atmosphere. Scientists are currently focused on examining exoplanets in their search for extraterrestrial life. The discovery of phosphine on Venus has injected excitement and new possibilities into this effort to find life beyond Earth. However, studying a planet's atmosphere can provide crucial information about its habitability. According to Tyson, the discovery of phosphine has ushered in a new era of astronomical interest in Venus. Although the idea of inhabiting Venus with its poisonous atmosphere is unfeasible, exploring the planet's history and the possibility of encounters with extraterrestrial beings remains a fascinating goal. The classified photos from the Veneta missions point to the potential encounters with living organisms during the Vera 13 mission. Dr. San Formality, principal investigator and leader of the Laboratory of Photometry and Thermal Radiometry at the Russian Academy of Sciences, has revealed intriguing findings on these missions. Formality revealed that Veneta 13 modified more than just the soft landing of Venus. By re-examining the mission's panoramic images, they identified three objects with the characteristics of living things. These photographs were confidential and classified for decades, until Russian scientists decided to make the data public again. It is speculated that the Soviets kept these images secret to avoid interference from the U.S. as the U.S. Space Agency had greater financial resources. 
Historical findings revealed that Venera 13 successfully landed on Venus in the Nazca Planitia region of Ezra Phoebe Regio. The Venera 13 mission survived for an astonishing 127 minutes and captured high-resolution images of the Venusian surface. A researcher has reanalyzed the images captured by the Venera 13 cameras. Dr. San Formality described three objects in particular. The first, a disc-shaped creature, appeared to react to changes in heat or pressure. The second object resembled an elongated black object visible for the first 13 minutes of the mission, but then changed shape. The most intriguing finding was the appearance of an extraterrestrial scorpion around the 19th minute of the mission, documented in unclassified photos. The scorpion of unknown origins raises the possibility that it may be alien or astrobiological in nature. The resurgence of these images has revived interest in space exploration for the Russian space agency Roscosmos. In this new era of space exploration, Moscow claims Venus as its home planet and plans to send a conclusive mission to explore Venus up close by 2029. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel, hit the like button, and turn on the notifications to keep up to date with upcoming releases, which promise to be even more fascinating than today's video. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.